Welcome to the Money Coach Secrets. In this episode, we discuss the secret of tithing. Acquiring wealth is like putting together a, a puzzle, a puzzle that is made up of many pieces. Now, the more pieces you are able to put together of the wealth puzzle, the richer you will be. Some pieces of the puzzle are more significant than other pieces. As you've already learned from previous episodes, studying the Bible and the Talmud, subconscious intentions, good timing, high probability, persistence, consistency, being thankful in all circumstances, meditation, acquiring wisdom, hiring employees, talking to God, advisors or mentors are important pieces of the wealth puzzle. Merit acquired through tithing is another important part of the wealth puzzle. Now, people are not limited to their destiny or influences outside their control. Rather, proper actions and merit determine success outcomes and even the length of life. Every investment, every financial decision, every effort to earn money has the potential for failure or for success. The Talmud, Kedushan 82a says, Pray to God to whom all wealth belongs because every craft contains the potentialities for both poverty and for wealth. Neither poverty nor wealth result from a person's profession. Rather, all is according to one's merit. The book Jewish Wisdom for Business Success says, Try to build your merit. Now, this involves praying, giving to charity, and helping others. The more merit you are able to garner, the more divine energy you attract, and the more successful you will be in every area of life. Now, Jews have an obligation to tithe. And when they fulfill this obligation, this brings them great financial blessing and success. The Babylonian Talmud, Shabbat 119a, states that the wealthy merit their wealth because they give tithes, as is, is written, Asir te asir, which means give tithes. Asir, so that thou mayest become wealthy. Tithe asir. The Bible, Nahum 1.12, contains this secret code. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. To decode this, we look to the Talmud, Geten 7b. It says, even a poor man who himself subsists on charity should give charity. If he does that, heaven will not again inflict poverty upon him. Now, heaven in this context refers to planetary influences as destiny, as in Jeremiah 10, 2 of the NIV states, do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. The NLT of the same verse reads, do not act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Tithing is considered to be one of the best methods of positively influencing unfavorable influences regarding finances and untimely death. The Talmud, Shabbos 156, states, Charity delivereth from death, and not merely from an unnatural death, but from even death itself. The harsh penalty of neglecting the obligation to tithe are some of the following. Untimely death. No profits in business, trying to earn a livelihood, but uh, not succeeding. The sages of the Talmud made it very clear that the punishment for neglecting the poor when they ask for help is poverty. The William Davidson Talmud, Tamura 16a says, when a poor person goes to a homeowner and says, provide for me, if the homeowner provides for him, that is good. But if not, he who made this one wealthy now makes him poor. And he who made that one poor now makes him wealthy. The Bible, 
NLT, Proverbs 28, 27 states, Whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to poverty will be cursed. Ignoring the poor and needy results in failure in different areas of life. The Talmud tells us that it is permitted to test God to see if we will really become wealthy through tithing. The Talmud, Tanit 9a, tells us that it is forbidden to test God in all cases except for tithing, since it is written in Malachi 3.10, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse and test me with this, says the Lord, if I will not open for you the very windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing until it is beyond enough. Now the Talmud goes on to explain that beyond enough means until your lips are tired from saying enough. However, the guarantee that one will become wealthy through tithing is only applicable if exactly one-tenth or more of one's weekly, monthly, or yearly income is separated and given based on a, an exact accounting system. The guarantee of wealth is also only applicable if the tithe is given to poor people who study the Torah or to those in poverty who are requiring these funds in order to survive. Some Jews have a custom to give half of their tithing obligation to impoverished relatives and the remaining to charities. The CJB, Leviticus 25.35 says, if a member of your people has become poor so that he can't support himself among you, you are to assist him as you would a foreigner or a temporary resident so that he can continue living with you. John D. Rockefeller, regarded by many as the wealthiest man in history, said, I never would have been able to tithe the first million dollars I ever made if I had not tithed my first salary, which was $1.50 per week. There are 613 commandments in the Torah. Most of the Torah's 613 commandments are for the benefit of others and society as a whole. But tithing, known as zedekah, is a command that benefits the giver even more so than the receiver. According to Jewish tradition, the benefit of giving to the poor is so great that a beggar actually does the giver a favor by allowing a person the opportunity to perform zedeka. The Midrash, Leviticus Rabbah 3410 says, the blessing of zedeka is greater for the person who gives than for the person who receives. Jewish sages have taught that giving charity is equal to all the other commandments combined, making it the number one most important commandment. Tithing is mentioned more than once in the Talmud, indicating how important this code is for wealth creation. The Talmud, Shabbat 119a, advises, Give tithes so that thou mayest become wealthy, and tithe so that you will become rich. Tanit 9a. We have an obligation to make sure that the funds given are being used properly. We must do due diligence and investigate the legitimacy of a charity before donating to it. We can also refuse to give if we have doubts about a uh, beggar's situation. There are many people who ask for help, but who have no genuine need. If we know that our funds aren't going to be used wisely, we can refuse to give. The Talmud, Kesubas 68a, states that we don't need to give to all who ask. The existence of frauds and cheaters means we don't have to give to all who ask. The Talmud suggests petitioning God for wisdom in giving to the right cause and to the right people. God will send people who are fitting recipients so that you will be rewarded for assisting them. You want to avoid giving to unsuitable recipients and getting no reward for your efforts. The Talmud, 
Baba Bathra Nai B says, Sovereign of the universe, even at the time when they conquer their evil inclination and seek to do charity before thee, cause them to stumble through men who are not fitting recipients, so that they should receive no reward for assisting them. Therefore, if you assist the wrong people, such as cheaters, frauds, and addicts, drugs, alcohol, or sex, the Talmud warns that you will receive no reward for assisting them. Be very diligent and carefully select who you decide to help and give funds to. Pray for wisdom in tithing to the right recipients. Besides the obligation to tithe to worthy recipients, we need to avoid becoming in need of charity ourselves. If a person is unemployed, they should humbly take any work that is available, even if they think it is beneath their skills, talents, and dignity. The Talmud, Kathubas 59b, states that idleness leads to idiocy. Jewish sages would purposely carry burdens on their shoulders because they wanted their students to see that manual labor is to be respected. A person should love work and not hate it. Avat de Rabbi Nasan 11.1 Most traditional Jews give Masr Kesafim, one-tenth of one's income, also known as tithing. Rabbinic scholars set a standard that at a minimum, every person is obligated to give 10% of their annual income or realized gains. Now, at the same time, a cap of 20% of annual income is placed on tithing. The Code of Jewish Law states that there are three levels of giving. A generous person will give 20% of his assets. An average person will give 10%. Anything below 10% is considered stingy. Now, those who are poor may give less, but must still give to the extent that they are able. However, no person should give so much that they become poor and dependent on charity themselves. All recurring income is tithed annually, but assets are tithed only once, not annually. It is recommended to give the first fruits of all your income, meaning to tithe first before making it any other bill payments, but after payment of taxes. Now, tithing is taken off net profits. A person is not obligated to tithe from unrealized gains. Thus, if one's financial assets appreciate in value, there is no obligation to give until the asset is sold, resulting in realized gains. In addition, a person does not need to tithe if the principal is still at risk. Thus, a speculative investment that is currently paying out returns would not be considered uh, suitable until the original investment is recovered. Certain types of charity are considered more worthy than others. The Mishnah Torah, a code of Jewish religious law, describes uh, different levels of zedek. The levels of charity from the least beneficial to the most beneficial are giving begrudgingly, giving less than you should, but giving it cheerfully, giving after being asked, giving before being asked, giving when you do not know the recipient's identity, but the recipient knows your identity. Giving when you know the recipient's identity, but the recipient doesn't know your identity. Giving when neither party knows the other's identity. Enabling the recipient to become self-reliant. Now the poor need charity, but even more so, they need inspiration. The highest level of charity is, is to educate. Educate the poor and help them become self-sufficient. To merit wealth, the Talmud, Shabbat 119a, teaches that there are several ways to uh, do so besides tithing and charity. Those that don't tithe merit wealth because they honor the Torah. And others merit wealth because they honor the Sabbath. 
and we will discuss other ways to merit wealth in future episodes. Thank you. Now subscribe to our podcast and to our YouTube